What's going on everybody? My name is Richard Alvarez and welcome to my channel, Richie's Revelations. I am not going to show you a video of 3D Intel. Instead, I am going to show you the unboxing of the Creality Ender 6 that I recently purchased. Super stoked about it. I read great reviews. I've seen tons of video that people are just thrilled of having it. And it's such a great asset to their company or to their business. So I'm going to show you how I installed it. I'm going to show you all the pros and cons about it. All the things that I ran into, all the hiccups that's happened. And I'm going to show you a couple of the prints that I've made with it. So stay tuned to the end because it was a handful. I'm just going to leave it at that. So here is a time lapse of me assembling it. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so I just got done unboxing everything of the Ender 6. Wow, some of these parts are pretty heavy. Way heavier than the Teeple Tornado when I first got that box. That thing was at least like maybe 20 pounds. This one is uh, 50 pounds or more. Oh man, I'm surprised the UPS man didn't just drop it in my front door. Okay. So, laid out all the pieces here. This thing, this thing is just massive. I didn't think it was gonna be that big, but oh my God. I, <laughs> I hope I have enough room. Well, that's one of the reasons why I'm assembled it on the floor. So, yeah. Um, so far, so good. Right off the bat, I'm glad it came with tools. I thought I was gonna have to go grab my toolbox. But this one, this one came with a lot more tools than, than the TiVo, so that's, uh, that's really good. Oops, probably should have not thrown it on the plate. One thing I really love, that they actually gave a flash drive. That's awesome. And an 8 gigabyte card. Awesome, that's also pretty cool. It's definitely come uh, in handy. Scraper. I'm probably going to stick to mine. And I believe this is the spool holder. And I didn't know it came with the roll. That's awesome. I can't remember if they give you an option, but this one is a white PLA plus 1.75. It's great. Didn't finish the painting there. Whatever, I'm sure this is gonna cover it. Heat plate enclosed box this is the framework and yeah um i guess when i assemble it i'm gonna do a little bit more research and talk about the specs that comes with this printer so let's do this
and welcome back everybody i hope you enjoyed that little time lapse of me assembling the ender the creality ender 6 so this was kind of a little bit of a headache assembling it just because i did run through a lot of uh, hiccups and with that being said i'm going to tell you all the hiccups that i came across and hopefully you don't run through the same problems that i did so to start off when you're installing the corners, um, there are two different kind of configurations. So if one doesn't properly fit, don't try to pry it in there or jam it in there because you are going to strip the plastic that kind of slides within the, the grooves of the frame. Downside about this, that they don't all necessarily flush very snug to the frame not really of a problem but you know you have OCD like I do and then you know you know that they're there it's kind of a bother so hopefully I just get used to it another issue that I came across was the Z lead screw um, it's not really flush to the base of the printer I did a couple of prints it hasn't necessarily given me a problem but you know we'll see in a couple of weeks let's see what happens I'm not sure if it's supposed to be flushed or it's supposed to be like a, on a little angle, but what are you gonna do? Another issue that came across was uh, using the proper screws. Um, I kind of, um, I guess maybe I didn't read the manual correctly. Um, there's not really much to read, it's just all pictures. Uh, I used the screws that was meant for the panels. I used them for the, the heated bed. And they did fit. I probably recommend using the screws for the associated parts. Another problem that I ran into that I'm not really fond about was that the doors. Sorry, I'm just uh, doing a little quick time lapse. All right. That the door are not snug together. It's kind of like the right side kind of sticks out a little bit. I thought maybe you know I screwed in too tightly or maybe too loose, so I took all the all four screws out. I put them back in, but it was still giving me the same thing. Again, it's not really a big deal, but if you have OCD like I do, it's kind of a it's kind of a bother every time I look at it. But it's not affecting the print, so it is what it is. So when I assemble it and put it on my workbench, I turn it on, and right off the bat. I turned it on and I was trying to home the extruder and in the manual it showed that the extruder should go to the upper right corner but in my case it didn't it literally just went up and then it just homed right in the center maybe I thought that's how it is so when I homed it I began to level it and when I pressed the left upper corner level button the extruder hot end just continued to go to the left upper corner and just kept on going till the belts was grinding against the gears. Probably y'all know how that sounds and it's freaking terrifying. I just turned off the printer and just, I was trying to articulate my thoughts to see where I went wrong or what was going on. Maybe I plugged something in wrong. So not necessarily know how I fixed it, but so I unplugged and I cleaned all the plugs, put them back in. I went underneath the printer, I took off the panels, and then I went to the main board and I realized that all the connectors had glue from a, from a hot glue gun all over it. They were stringing all over the main board. So I got my tweezers, a pair of scissors, and I started clipping a little bit of the glue off. Then I also realized that most of the plugs weren't all the way plugged in like they had a lot of wiggle room so i took all the plugs out i replugged them in put the panel back on and lo and behold as soon as i homed it it went to the upper right corner and then i leveled it and it worked perfectly so i am currently printing at its max speed which is 300 percent these two i printed at normal speed at 100 percent 200 degrees on the hot end and 50 degrees on the heated plate it honestly came out beautiful the quality of it is just awesome i love how it came out it's almost perfect 
This one, oh by the way, these are the default prints that came in the SD card, so I just printed them all out just to make sure everything was working properly. With this one, I printed at 150 millimeters per second at 205 for the hot end and 55 on the heated plate. And the one I'm currently printing, which is just another one of, of this, is at max B 300, hot end is at 220, and the hot bed is at 60. I'm always used to using a painter's tape because I it's always worked phenomenal, so I just added that. With these other prints, um, came right off, so I'm just gonna leave that on. But I'm doing a little time lapse, so I'm, I'm probably gonna implicate this uh, little time lapse at the end of the video just to show you how well it prints. So far, the print is coming out phenomenal. I'm really happy of how it's coming out. That's definitely a good sign that this uh, this is really, really gonna help me out when it comes to printing. One more thing, um, so the manual isn't really that detailed on assembling it, but looking at the pictures, it's pretty straightforward on how to assemble it. One thing that I also didn't like that um, there's no, well, I thought there was no USB cable outlet, so I was kind of nervous, but I don't know, maybe this runs on Wi-Fi, maybe I missed that in the description when I first bought it. But when I took off the panels, the manual showed that there is a micro USB port right on the side. So I ordered a micro USB from Amazon. They say it was the best one on the market. I don't know. Use that. I was able to download the Creality Slicer. I made some other prints from that. That came out great. So that works just fine. So some things I really love about this printer is the semi-enclosed chamber. It really secures the print, making sure that there's no dust particles flying into it from the side. I love that there's a touch screen. It's very easy to use. It's not like a knob on the TiVo, TiVo Tornado. And you know, the display looks like it's from like the 80s or something. So this one is really high tech. I, I love it's very sensitive. You don't have to press it hard. I just do a little tap and it goes to wherever I want it to go. So that's pretty cool. I love that there's a filament runout sensor on a TiVo Tornado. I couldn't tell you how much times where I'll just leave a print going overnight and I come home and you know it's still printing but there's no there's no extruding and you know obviously I'll look at my filament and you know it's complete the roll is completely empty I'm glad this is uh this came this came with it I'm sure in the future this is gonna save me a lot of time and a lot of headache one thing I really love so the house I currently live in is semi old so I can't have a lot of things plugged in or the power would just go off. Unfortunately when I had the TiVo Tornado on and all the lights on in my studio, power will frequently go off. If the TiVo Tornado was in mid print, I would have to start all over again and that was such a headache. With this one of the features is the power off resume. I haven't tested it yet but it says if the power goes off and, I, and when I turn it back on, it will show on the display resume print and I will just have to click on it and it will just pick up where it left off. That by far is definitely one of the top, top best features that came with this printer. I love that. I kind of want to turn off my power on purpose just to try it out, but probably won't do that yet. <laughs> so yeah, overall, I think this printer is just phenomenal. I so far has been working great. All my prints has been coming out awesome painted the ears pink I'm, I'm really happy on how it came out on how it looks it looks cool as hell uh, I can't wait to start making more complex prints to see how, how I was able to handle it and yeah the three times speed it's 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 just great it's gonna save me a lot more time um, so yeah overall I would really recommend getting this printer for people that are just starting to print it's very easy to use. The software is very easy to use, easy to install, easy to assemble. Um, I probably give this like this printer 4.8 if it wasn't for the hidden micro USB port and the uh, hot glue gun all over the main board. That's I, I don't know if that if that's safe or you know it might sh short something. But yeah, so so that is the assembly of the Creality Ender 6. My name is Richard Alvarez. This is my channel, Rich's Revelations. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you next time. 
Oh, on a side note, in a couple weeks or maybe in a month or two, I'm going to shoot a second video on the outcome of its performance. Just to uh, show you guys how it's how it's holding up, uh, you know, how the prints are coming out, you know, if I'm running into any more problems or issues. So that will be shot in a couple weeks, so make sure you hit that notification button and stay tuned. Peace!